Good morning and welcome to Craft Memorial United Methodist Church. My name is Cynthia McGowan and I'm the pastor here at Craft. I would like to begin this morning with these words of blessed assurance. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, we put on Christ. So in Christ, may we be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Many of you recognize these words. They are usually spoken at the beginning of a funeral service. Words of grace that are meant to bring peace and hope to those who we have lost. Letting us know that those who have left this world are not gone away, but gone home. And one day we will join them in glory. I felt these words were fitting today on this All Saints Sunday. Today is a day where we remember and celebrate the lives of those dear to us who have gone to be with Jesus in this past year. Those church members and those who are uh, just people that are dear to our hearts that have, that have left a hole in our lives. Today is the day that we remember and celebrate the life and legacy that they left us. We remember the earthly, the early Christians rather, that started the church, many of whom were martyred for their faith. Let us celebrate their lives this morning and be inspired to live out our faith as we follow the example of those who have gone before us. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for this great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. And as we study your holy word this morning, may we be inspired to never be complacent in the way we live out our lives, but to live with vigor and relentless passion as we share your eternal hope with others through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So our scripture reading this morning is from Mark uh, chapter 12, starting in verse 38 and going through verse 44. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, as he taught, he said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to have the best seats in the synagogue and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He had sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of those who are contributing to the treasury, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she has put in, in her poverty, she has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
So this morning, we remember those who have lived out their faith in such a way that inspires us to do the same. They challenge us uh, to go beyond what's comfortable and to live our lives as living sacrifices to Jesus. And I believe this morning's text is a wonderful example of that, an example of trust, an example of commitment. It teaches a lesson in stewardship, helping us to see the beauty of holding things of this world loosely as we hold Jesus tightly. <clears throat> and I believe this morning's text is a wonderful example of that, helping us to see the beauty of letting go of the things of this world. Because it, because it is then and only then that we can live out our call to care for others, always willing to give a portion of what we have to help a person in need. God told Abraham years before, you are blessed to be a blessing. And that is an important spiritual principle to remember. You are blessed to be a blessing. But you may look at the widow in our text and say she was not blessed. She was in poverty. And our text tells us that the two small copper coins she gave was all that she had. Jesus offers us the widow as a model of faith, and he warns us against the corrupt scribes for their crime of selfishness. It is here that we see two very different kinds of people. The corrupt scribes who are concerned with gaining power over others in order to enrich themselves, and the widow, in contrast, surrenders all she has to God. Trusting that God will use what she has given, not only to care for her, but to care for others. You see, the temple offering was uh, partially there to take care of the widows. So she was trusting God and the system that was in place to care for her. It would have been one thing if we could leave the story as an example of two types of people. But I believe Jesus is pointing us to two roads that lay in front of each and every one of us, regardless of our place in society, our role in the church, or our level of income. Each of us can become the corrupt scribe, someone whose main focus is themselves when they have um, what they have and how they can get more power, money, prestige. Or we can become like the widow, a person of radical faith. Jesus speaks often of the temptation of riches. He tells us we, can, we cannot serve two masters, God and money. Jesus tells us those who are given much, much is expected. And again, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. <clears throat> St. Augustine expanded on this last verse in Luke to the following. He said, where your pleasure is, there is your treasure. Where your treasure is, there is your heart. And where your heart is, there is your happiness. So what is our lesson on this All Saints Sunday? As we think of those who we have lost this year, um, of course we're saddened, but I hope we're also inspired. Inspired to live our lives in a way um, that cares for others. Um, and uh, Inspired to live our lives the way that those we've lost li lived it. As they showed love and compassion to us. It reminds me of some of our dear church members that we have lost over this past year. And years past. Um, like Billy Oliver and Nancy Webster and Larry Murphy. Uh, Larry was a man who set an example for multiple generations of Murphys to follow. A man that loved his family with all all he had at the end of his life, he was at peace. When I asked him if he needed to talk about anything or get anything off his chest, all he said was, look after my girls, Ann and Cassie. All he was worried about were those he was leaving behind. He and all of those that will be mentioned here today are like the widow in our text. They were people that did not hold tightly to the things of this world. They put the highest value on relationships, on family, and on serving God, not by just coming to church, but by serving the church. 
and Larry, uh, Ann and Larry served as youth leaders. Uh, Miss Nancy served by encouraging others to knit for the homeless. She was always looking for ways to help our youth and children in need. And when our country was experiencing so much racial tension, Miss Nancy donated a painting to hang outside the conference room that so showed two children, one black and one white, playing together. Each of us is given one shot at this life. We have an opportunity to live a life that matters, a life that impacts the lives of others, and there are many ways to do that. But the most important way we can impact the world, especially those we love, is by living out our faith through our actions, just as the widow did. Not by only telling others that we're Christians, but by being there for others in, when it's hard and inconvenient and messy. The scribes enjoyed the accolades that came along with their title, but they were not so interested in making personal sacrifices for the good of others. To me, that is what makes life well lived. Someone willing to make a sacrifice for the good of others. People who love others in a way that lead them into a relationship with Jesus. Someone that gives beyond what is comfortable or easy. You see, all of those people in the temple that day uh, gave out of their excess. They gave after their needs were met, met and their bills were paid. But the widow, she gave all she had, trusting that God would care for her. She set an example of faith and trust by the way she lived. As we remember those who have passed from this life to the next this morning, let us remember that they are part of that great cloud of witnesses cheering us on from heaven in Hebrews 12.1, which states, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked before us. Let us remember those we have lost and the way that they have inspired us, the way that they've made us better, and let us strive to take the love that they gave us and not just keep it for ourselves, but spread it around to everyone we meet, giving generously and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ wherever we go. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we come to you this morning, Lord, remembering those we have lost this year, those who are with you today. Lord, we pray that as we look back on their lives, that we will be inspired to live our lives in a way that honors you, that draws people, people closer to you, and that draws us closer together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Help us to do your will as we live out our lives with faith and trust. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you all for joining me here this morning um, as you go about your day and maybe thinking of those you lost uh, over this past year um, in the sadness that goes along with losing someone. Help us to have joy remembering the way they touched our lives and the way that they inspired us to be better human beings. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.